This video is the third of a series titled Groasis Water Box Providing Solutions to World Problems. I'd like to suggest that you review the first two videos, part one and two, before going on to this third video, part three. During this segment of the interview, Peter is explaining the functioning of the capillary system, the importance of the primary route, and the reason for his invention, the capillary drill. The pictures you see refer to a desert planting experiment that took place in October of 2010. 600 seventh grade students from four Palm Beach High Schools in Southern California participated in a Groasis water box planting at the Whitewater Preserve 13 miles outside of Palm Springs. Together with Peter, they kicked off a three-week planting project with the Wildlands Conservancy, Bureau of Land Management, and the Palm Springs Unified School District. Present at the event were also Peter Ahern, K-12 Science Specialist of the Palm Springs Unified School District, teachers Philip Hudek and Ron Wallace, Whitewater Park Ranger Rick Burkett, Mr. Yap Wehrmann, Consul General from the Dutch Consulate in San Francisco, and KPSP reporter Kimberly Chang. I'd briefly like to mention that soil is a medium that stores and moves water. Soil contains pores and millions of tiny vertical channels called capillary tubes. Water is held in soil in two ways. One, as a thin coating on the outside of soil particles and two, in the pore spaces themselves. Soil water in the pore spaces can be divided into two different forms. One, gravitational water and two, capillary water. When it rains, gravitational water generally moves quickly downward due to the force of gravity. Conversely, capillary water is pulled around soil particles and through small pore spaces in any direction by capillary forces, even against the force of gravity. Therefore, Capillary water is crucial for crop production and the plant's water consumption, especially in arid regions in which the rain falls in short periods and drains into the soil deeply and quickly. Peter, can you explain to us a little bit about the capillary, not to destroy the capillary? That's something I've, you know, you talked before and I've also seen on your website again and again. And then the radical root versus the secondary root, or what you call the tap or primary versus the secondary root. In the soil, you have millions of channels. The channels are made by animals, such animals you can see, microbes. You have a billion microbes in one cubic meter. Amazing. They are working daily to make uh, soil fertile, and they use uh, the pollen leaves to, to live from. Now, uh, as soon as you dig a hole, you destroy that system, and roots use that system to grow down. So, what we don't see, because the channels are too small to see, are those little channels, and the roots go into those little channels, step down, and they can go into to 80 meters deep. As soon as you destroy that system, the, uh, once you plant a tree, the uh, transport capacity of soil, which is downwards if you have rain, but upwards when it's very dry, you have to spoil that so your roots won't find water. So what we actually do is we dig a hole uh, only that deep where we plant the, uh, uh, the plant, but the tip of the roots we put on uncut or unmoved soil. The tip of the root immediately finds intact channels to grow in. In nature, a, a tree is not planted as a tree, but it is planted as a seed. Nature does that through the excrement of animals and also puts it on top of the soil. It covers that seed with excrement so that the water cannot evaporate, as we copy that with the water. And that root from that seed immediately enters into 
untouched or unmoved forest. And that's why I see it has grow even on areas where it seems to be very dry. Now, um, the roots. Every plant on earth starts with the seed, and that seed starts with one root, and we call that the primary root. Ten roots or fat roots, as many roots, many names of the same root. Now, that ten root is capable to break a rock, and that's why we see two stone a rock. Yes. And the ten root finds water, and that's always about when it's already one inch in its feet. Then you have the so called secondary or lateral roots. They grow on the surface. They use the oxygen, they use mineral, they uh, uh, drink a lot when you have a very heavy shower. So, uh, that lateral roots are not capable of keeping the tree alive during long periods of drought. For mm -hmm. that reason, you need a primary root that can deep into the soil, and that's why a tree, when you have a tree in dry areas, Although five or six months there are water, then it is depending on that primary root. During the past 30 years, Peter traveled throughout 52 countries, and during the past five years, he researched the way in which plants are grown from seed in 20 different countries. He was unable to find a single modern production method that is growing seedlings with healthy primary roots. The reason for the primary roots deficiency is that the primary root is allowed to reach and touch the bottom of the planting container or plug tray. When it does, it splits into secondary roots. This destroys the primary root and results in overdeveloped secondary roots. It is one of the infinite mysteries of omnipotent nature that the primary root can develop a pressure of up to 50 kilograms per square centimeter, which is about 700 pounds per square inch. The primary root can therefore penetrate hard soil or make its way through the cracks of rocks to reach the capillary water. In contrast, the secondary roots only have about one-tenth of the power of the primary roots and are incapable of penetrating hard soil or the cracks in rocks. Even though a plant may possess strongly developed secondary roots, without irrigation it will not be able to survive in dry or eroded soil, on rocks, or during drought unless it possesses a healthy primary root. Peter developed a new type of plug tray called the pen root paper plug. This plug tray is made of paper pulp and is shaped in such a way that both the primary root and the secondary root stay intact and develop perfectly. The plug is standing on two small legs, which allow the primary root to grow downward and to be air pruned. That way, it continues to develop vertically until the time of planting. The links to produce perfect primary roots are available in the description section below the video. Let me ask you, you also invented this wonderful drill um, so that you can even establish the boxes on the rocky areas and on slopes. What gave you that idea? That was actually because I was lazy. I was uh, planting the boxes in Morocco when it was too hot. You know, you have a thick egg and it's 45 Celsius and the soil is rocky. And I have a dream I want to cause the reforestation of the world. And that I was working over an hour to make one printing hole. That's what Peter is never going to work if you don't optimize it. Right. You know, you have to, it's, it's, and it's also not human. You can't put 10,000 people working in the desert so hot making holes. So I thought, you know, this part you have to optimize. So I came to the idea to make a drill, and because you're working rocks, the head of the drill is from the oil. And it's capable to make a planting place on every place. And trees in itself have no problem to grow on rocks. All mountains are made of rocks. And everybody knows that mountains are covered with trees. 
I know. So, but, it's but it's really not a problem. It's a problem for us to make a sense of it. That's mm -hmm. what it would be. To put his roots in the rocks is no problem at all. When conducting his tests in arid and hot regions, Peter soon found out that the soil is often quite hard, which puts a great strain on the crew when digging out a planting hole, especially during the heat of a summer day. Peter also encountered a dense layer of soil called hardpan that is for the most part impermeable to rainwater penetration, leading to rapid runoff, extensive and damaging flooding, and harmful soil erosion. The heart pen severely impedes or hinders altogether the growth of the roots into the soil. As we all know, necessity is the mother of invention. Together with the Dutch company Basreis, developer and manufacturer of machinery for agriculture, horticulture and arboriculture, Peter modified a drill that had been developed for the oil industry and patented his Grace's capillary drill worldwide. His drill easily pulverizes hard, rocky soil and creates a horizontal, saucer-shaped planting hole of 0.8 square meters or 8.5 square feet. It also breaks the hard pen layer leaving the regular soil or the rocks underneath intact. This is important so that the capillary is not destroyed. The planting hole is produced in only 30 seconds by the drill, tremendously reducing the time and the hard labor workers would require with pickaxes. If you have any questions for Peter, Please leave them in the comment section and I'm happy to ask Peter the next time I will be talking to him. Thank you for listening and for visiting my channel and please support Peter's work if you can.